In this video, I'll share with you my five strategies that helped me pass Microsoft certification. Okay, so let's get into this video. On the weekend, I sat the AZ500 Microsoft Security Engineer Associate Renewal Exam. I actually didn't study and I also didn't use Google as it's now open book. I just wanted to see if I could actually pass without studying. Now, I'm not trying to brag and I know how the internet gets. I was actually shocked myself. Also, before you say anything, now I'm not some super smart kid like Elon Musk. I don't even have all that much experience, especially around the certification categories. I build Azure landing zones with code and scale out environments, but I don't really deal with like enter ID and conditional access policies, but I do have knowledge and experience as a cloud engineer. Now, before we get into these tips, I wanted to preface that certifications are great with expanding your knowledge and testing your skills but they are not the be all and end all. And to be honest, I question people with a lot of certifications under their belt. I've worked with a lot of people and not once have I heard someone say, oh, I learned this from my exam. More like I saw that on Stack Overflow. But it's definitely a value add to your skills, especially if you're trying to get into the industry or want to get a new role. Personal development will always be a positive. Hi, I'm Sunny, and this is Someone Else's Cloud. If you're new here, I create content about working in tech as a cloud engineer, and I also have a podcast that I release at the end of the month where I talk about all the latest tech headlines. So give this video a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you later. See ya. Hopefully these tips will help you along the way. So let's get straight into this. Tip number one, learn to study your way. I wanted to open up with this tip because I think it's probably the most important. Now, the reason why I phrased it this way is because everyone learns differently. So you have to find what works for you because at the end of the day, you still have to put in the work. You have to gain hands-on experience, whether you are lucky enough to get on the job experience or test things out for yourself and build a lab. The key is to find something that works for you. So this is my process on how I like to study for exams. Number one, I start with watching videos, mainly from a cloud guru, which I think they're now owned by Pluralsight. But most of the content out there is pretty much the same. You can get Scott Duffy videos on Udemy for $50 or less. And John Savile has masterclasses on YouTube for free. I generally study with the videos for about one to two weeks. Step two, I will then sit test exams from Wiz Labs to gauge my comprehension of the materials. This also helps me get in the mindset. Step three, I'll go through my test exam results, mainly focusing on incorrect answers and understand the correct answer and why it's correct. WizLab also provides Microsoft documentation and links in the results. Step four, if I still don't understand the answer, I'll read the Microsoft documentation and then I'll build and configure it to grasp the concept. I'll generally do this for about two more weeks and repeat the process with the test exams. Generally, there is about five test exams and obviously I gauge the results and I try to score at least 80% or higher. A simple example of this was when I completed the AZ-104 exam, I had no idea what Azure File Sync was. So I enabled Hyper-V on my PC, which I believe is free with Windows 10 Professional. I built a domain controller and file server with a Windows Server trial license. I then configured Azure File Sync in the cloud and tested syncing from my local file server to Azure pretty much mimicking an on-premise to cloud scenario. This allowed me to grasp the configuration and the constraints, and it definitely helped with my exam. Tip number two, filter out the booby traps. Generally with multiple choice questions, you'll get four answers. And in most cases, you can rule out two of them. The questions and scenarios I find can be misleading or contain irrelevant information just to distract you. The questions will generally play on the words and sometimes you'll question if the answers are real or made up, but there's a high chance that if you haven't heard of it, it probably doesn't exist. An example question I had was about a network security group. And I knew that an NSG can only be assigned to a network interface and a subnet. So straight away, I was able to rule out any answers that did not include these. So try not to get overwhelmed with so many answers and try to remove at least two to allow you to logically break down the correct answer. Tip number three, know the constraints. Now this sort of overlaps with the last one. So the key is to know the limitations and constraints of technologies. This can be configuration or SKUs and licenses. 
because in most cases, answers will be focused on what Microsoft would consider best practices. An example of this is SKUs for a load balancer, standard versus basic. But this is kind of an easy one because Microsoft will always recommend a standard SKU because it includes HTTPS health probes. Microsoft aren't gonna recommend HTTP services. I think I even recall something about how they are enforcing TLS 1.2 across the platform. Next, availability zones. This is a given. We need availability options. And then diagnostics, logging and metrics is also important. And an SLA of 99.99. Basic has no SLA. In fact, it has none of these features. So I very doubt that Microsoft would actually recommend using a basic SKU in a production environment. But then again, it is dependent on the objective of the question, which leads me to tip four, don't get bamboozled. Now, this sounds quite trivial, but I've done a few exams and I know that I've had to read the questions several times and try and decipher the keywords and the objectives of the question because sometimes there could be multiple answers, but you need to meet the objective. An example of this is you need to deploy an Azure policy to all subscriptions. You decide to create a policy definition and assignment and scope them at the resource group level. Is this correct? True or false? So I'll pause right here and have a think. Now, technically, this would work, but it doesn't meet the objective because it says all subscriptions. Now, this comes down to best practice and hierarchy of management group, subscriptions, and then resource groups. So basically, you need to create a new management group, you move all the subscriptions under, and then you create a new policy, and then you assign it the management group. So the answer would actually be false because it's incorrect. And that's where they sort of catch you out. Tip number five, get mentally prepared. We all know that when you're under pressure with time constraints, doubt will creep in, rationales out the door, and then enter stress. You may read a question several times. You may read a question several times and still not be able to comprehend it, especially the big scenarios. So how I get around this is to sit test exams. Even if the content is out of date, it doesn't really matter because it's more about focusing your mind and reading questions rationally under time constraints. And I think that's the best way to prepare yourself to sit an exam. Obviously the Microsoft Learn site offers some test questions, but I personally recommend WizLabs and here's kind of a bonus tip for you. Originally I was buying test exams for $20 each, but then I stumbled into a lifetime membership. Now I can't remember what site I got it from, but it was like one of those Groupon sites. I now have a lifetime membership for $40. And it turns out WizLab also now offers video training. So it's a pretty sweet deal and it's like four years running. Also, to help you build mental fortitude, you need to be comfortable with the potential result, which is going to be either a pass or a fail. You just need to be okay with it. I feel like as long as you put in the work to study, everything will work out. Either way, you have learned something new. I can guarantee you that even the most skilled people out there still have the same nerves. I don't think I have ever gone into an exam thinking I would ace it. I know there's a lot to take in and there's a lot to learn, but it starts becoming a bit of a memory game. But these tips have definitely helped me and I was lucky enough to pass the AZ-104, the 300, the 301 and the 500 first go. Experience would definitely help, but if you can't get on the job experience, then build a lab. And I know you're probably worried about spending a lot of money on a lab, but you could consider it a cost management exercise to understand how to reduce your spend, which will definitely serve you in the real world. What a better way to save than saving your own money rather than some companies. But you've got to remember that you have to invest money to develop yourself in some way. And I'll close with this bonus tip because I think it definitely is overlooked and you should ensure that you have a good night's sleep the night before and have a light breakfast to help keep your mind in check and ready to deal with the stress of doing an exam. Even go to the gym if you have time and drink water to stay hydrated because your brain is made up of 75% water. You basically need to go into this with a champion mindset like a pro athlete. So I hope these tips have helped in some kind of way and if you're sitting an exam, all the best, and I'm sure you'll pass with flying colors. But hey, it's not the end of the world if you don't. And if you fall off that bike, you get back onto it. 
Let me know in the comments below your tips and how you went on the exam. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. It really helps reach other people out there and stay tuned for more content and I'm signing out. See ya!